You're listening to... Let's just look at the Large Hadron Collider itself. It's it's circulating particles at near the speed of light in opposite directions. And those that spin, that circular pathways uh, within the 27 kilometer ring, 27 kilometer uh, pathway causes energy to be thrown out from that circular pathway and that energy is thrown out in the form of gamma rays and x-rays, the synchrotron energies. This does not occur in a linear accelerator, a straight pathway of particles that are accelerated, only in that circular motion. Now, if we're talking about that as spin and the possibility that it creates a wormhole through which one can travel, theoretically that is possible. And I'm going to leap back into history a little bit to the Nazi Bell, the Bell Project. And they were using spin in the form of oppositely spinning red mercury. Uh, red mercury spun up to extremely high rates of circulation or RPM. And it was theorized or alleged that the Nazi Bell was a time distortion device and through the rapid motion of red mercury it was generating gamma rays and x-rays that then killed many of the initial project scientists the nazi scientists uh, during world war ii and we're seeing that same process if you will replicated with the large hadron collider to obviously a massive scale the theory was, or the story surrounding the Nazi bell, was that it was a time device and that it was distorting time. So the question, obviously, is does CERN, does the Large Hadron Collider, have the same capability, but to a greater extent, to a more refined level? I will say yes, it's definitely feasible that a wormhole can be created. Is it for the traveling back in time or going uh, to the future? No. My summation of this or conclusion is that it is a real-time, a today-based, a real-time travel between dimensions without going back in time or into the future but staying within the present for that uh, travel between uh, dimensions or, if you will, um, locations that are bilocated in the form of supersymmetry and also comprising of quantum entanglement and i'll stop there yeah that sounds really interesting you know it, it reminds me of the um you know most people are familiar with the norway spiral and i think that was back in 2009 and mm -hmm. it was a really interesting phenomenon and even biblically the the discussion of whirlwinds you know that come out from heaven you know second kings 2 talks about how elijah was taken up by a whirlwind and, uh, you know, if you think about what a whirlwind is, it's sort of a spin type of situation. Perhaps it was described in some sort of wormhole even back then, uh, mm -hmm. which is interesting to contemplate. But um, I, I'm sort of at a loss of where to take it. But <laughs> Spin okay. type situation. Spin type okay. situation. <laughs> Let's see if I can help you with this. Let's talk about Saturn. Yeah, let's go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not the cars. You're right. Although we've got all the symbology. Yep. Now, we, we, we can get into the ancient myths related to Saturn, but just focus on the physics. And to talk about wormholes, let's take it to maybe something that's a little closer to home, and that is Saturn. It is my hypothesis, based upon looking at the ancient myths, looking at the Thunderbolts project with the previous alignment and close proximity of Saturn to Earth. It's apparent to me that the agenda with CERN is to reconnect electrically using a plasma conduit, reconnect to the southern pole of Saturn. You mentioned the spiral in Nor over Norway. There is an identical spiral located at the southern pole of Saturn. The spiral over Norway was generated by the Large Hadron Collider. The spiral at the southern pole of Saturn is generated by another synchrotron particle accelerator, a quote, naturally occurring one, 
at the northern pole of Saturn. And you may recall seeing the images from NASA and the Hubble telescope of the northern pole being a hexagon, a hexagonal shape. And interestingly, contained within that hexagon are two oppositely moving clouds of energy, particles. Think about the Nazi bell, the red mercury spinning in opposite directions. Same thing is happening to the North Pole as is happening with the Large Hadron Collider, an extension of the Nazi bell. The Large Hadron Collider is a synchrotron particle accelerator. So is the North Pole of Saturn on a massive scale. And it is connecting from the North Pole to the South Pole within the gas, the gaseous body of Saturn. It is connecting the two poles by using electric plasma in the form of a helical shape that looks like DNA, a helical plasma conduit connecting north and south. Now, if you take the southern pole of Saturn, you create a identical helical shape plasma conduit, electrical plasma connection between the southern pole of Saturn and the Large Hadron Collider, and you have reconnected the two planets in an identical fashion as existed during the Golden Age. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. You know, you hear about the multiverse and in other universes, all these crazy things may exist, but the fact that that exists is the most mind blowing thing I've ever heard. Now, why do you think this isn't public knowledge? Like, why is this not a thing? I feel like that should be a pretty well known fact if we basically can create a, I don't know, if I understand you correctly, a, a wormhole to Saturn. Well, that goes to the hidden agenda. 